Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the C80 Celestron 80mm scope. This is an F11 scope. This particular classic scope dates from the early 1980s. Uh, the orange color, very, very distinctive in this kind of scope, didn't last very long, just a few years. Uh, after that they went to a black and some of the other features changed. For good reason, I'll show you why. There's a, there's a couple of issues with this scope. But uh, in many respects, it's a wonderful, wonderful telescope. Beautiful scope, overmounted. This Polaris mount is a superb mount. They even put an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain on this mount, which may have been a little overkill. But this is uh, great for an 80mm F11 telescope. Let me show you a little bit about how this works. Um, and you may have seen mounts that look a lot like this. There were several clones made. Many modern mounts have similar features to this. It's a very, very nice, high quality mount. Lock it down here. Here's a slow motion. Here's another slow motion over here. It's a, a beautiful mount in almost all respects. One thing I want you to notice about this particular mount is that this one is elevated high enough for me to use this. Uh, as a, an adult standing up, I can use this and look through the eyepiece and so forth. Uh, some of the later models and uh, some of the other scopes came on a shorter tripod. And a shorter tripod would be really inconvenient with a refractor of this kind of focal length. Um, and you can oftentimes buy the same, the same equatorial head, the Polaris equatorial head, and the legs will be so short that you have to crawl around on your belly to actually look through, at least through a refractor. They may have been designed for a reflector. I think they put a four and a six inch reflector on this scope or on this mount. So uh, might have been designed for a, another scope. Anyway, watch out for that. If you're in the used market looking for one of these, try and get the tall tripod if you possibly can. The tall tripod, of course, can be shrunk down to a, a, a little tiny short thing if you want to. So. That's another nice additional feature. Also, this thing has the, <laughs> wow, spectacular, this is called Tupperware. It is like Tupperware, it's Vixen. This whole scope is made by Vixen and it was one of the early models made by Vixen. Highly regarded, uh, uh, very, very highly regarded. Anyway, this little Vixen Tupperware thing, I'll show you some close-ups of that. One of the things I did not like about this scope when I first saw it was, first of all, the rather garish orange color which I've now come to love and these uh, stickers they put you know a sticker with Celestron and then down here they put a bunch of other data focal length and even a phone number you can call if you don't know what you're doing anyway there's uh, stuff that I thought was completely unnecessary and now has come to be a feature of this classic telescope I'm going to show you a major negative about this whole system and they changed it quickly, didn't last. That's, that's one of the ways you can tell if this one is uh, very early and uh, original. This mounting system here, and uh, they, I don't know why they thought this was going to be okay. It's got some nice features, uh, but it, it just doesn't work well. You have a kind of a, this pushes, it and pushes and then pulls. So it's pulling, this is actually pulling the, um, this clamp and pulling the scope towards a kind of a V shape here in the mount. I'll show you. So you can loosen those. Whoa, all right, okay. Out of control. All right, that's one thing. Of course, you can adjust it now. I mean, you can adjust the scope back and forth and balance it. That's cool, that's very nice. But uh, these things, and you can take the whole scope out. Look at those things, those are floating around and there's no way to control those. They're banging all over the place. If you're gonna, you know, ship it or put that in a box or whatever, those are a pain, a terrible pain. And you can see a couple of screws or nuts here that are, that's what the, the little bolts are pushing against there to hold this down against this nice V groove here. Very nice in principle, but a real pain to actually operate. And 
you know, you put the scope on here. All right, let's see if we can figure this one out. Put that one on. Put that one. Oh, it's sliding away. Oh, dear. All right, okay. Now we got to, whoops, it's got to be on there. Oh, dear. All right, okay. Found it. We found it. We got, okay, we got it locked in. Heaven help us. If you don't, uh oh, it's out of balance. Now we got to, oh, dear. All right, so this is, I'm being over dramatic, of course, but uh, it's just a pain, a pain in the neck. And I don't know how many years it lasted like this. It wasn't very long, and they changed the whole system. And there are ways, if you got one like this, easy fixes for this, or fairly easy fixes for something like this. Let me show you. Okay, first thing you're going to do to fix this mount is get rid of these little things here. You may want to hold on to them. Not sure what for, but I don't even know what you call it. It's just a little screw with an indentation on the other side. So now you've got just a couple of holes here. So you can take the bolt out of that. This is a uh, standard, this is a 90 millimeter tube holder. Goes right through there. Now that's an easy fix. So now you have some standard tube rings. Put your scope on there. And now the scope goes right on like that. Much, much more convenient. And of course you can still adjust the scope anywhere you want. Matter of fact, you can even leave these rings attached and detach it here for convenience. So now you can just take these guys off here if you want. The clamps will stay in place. Much better solution all the way around. Much better solution. But uh, there's another very nice solution. Let me show you what that looks like. You can buy or make a Vixen ducktail adapter for this thing. And then you just put that on there, like so. Now it's very easy to interchange other scopes with the standard Vixen dovetail and uh, get a Vixen dovetail for your C80 mounted on there. Let me show you this extremely complicated right ascension hour angle kind of a system they've got going here. First of all, we're looking through the southern end of the polar axis and the polar alignment scope would go right in through there. I don't have one, um, but that's where it would go. There's some writing down here that says that some of these indications are only meant to be used with that, uh, with the polar alignment scope. I wish I had the polar alignment scope so I could tell what the heck that means. Anyway, here you've got something called, uh, this is right ascension, but then you've got this other thing called hour angle, which is an old, old system, and you have to do some math. It, it does exactly the same thing. You just have to do a little bit of math to figure out where you're at. Anyhow, I'm not sure what all these indications are. Talk about complicated, man, oh man. They have several different varieties of these on uh, the Polaris mounts. I've seen pictures of other kinds that are considerably more simple. Anyhow, if you want to impress your friends, that's how you do it. Just get that thing out and say, would you set that right ascension for me, please? Watch him struggle. This mount is easy to remove from the tripod hub. You can't see it, but there's a that device down there holding on. It's that little bolt. One of the tricks to this, though, is 
Got to loosen these guys. This little pinion here has to poke up between those two because this is going to allow you to adjust for the azimuth. So this thing slips right on as long as you make sure to allow for that. On. Now you have a couple of push push bolts so you can do fine adjustment for the azimuth and this device here the return buckle thing comes up and pushes uh, against this that allows you to adjust the altitude Okay, let's take a look at this Tupperware container. That's got Vixen stamped on it. And what's inside here? First we have this wrench, which fits several of the nuts on the mount. And we have a Celestron star diagonal. I'm not 100% sure that this is the uh, original, but it does look right. I think it is the original. The period looks right. This is a, uh, an ortho, 6mm ortho, that's a good eyepiece. Celestron 25mm Kellner, uh, not to be used as sun filter. Vixen plug, and the two little, what do you call those, push screws. So uh, that's what we have in the Tupperware box. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the C80 from the early 1980s. Thank you very much for watching.